Right. Um, so, hi everyone. Um, my name is Masu Rahman. I'm a site reliability engineer at Welcome Software uh, slash Newsprint. And today I'll be talking about how Welcome implemented our Terraform uh, into its stack with the use of YAML as configuration files. So I'm gonna start off with some basics uh, and first uh, understand what YAML is. In its completely unabbreviated form, YAML stands for yet another markup language. It's mainly a data serialization language and has been primarily been used for configuration files, especially in famous tools like Kubernetes. Um, YAML is for data and not for documents. So I'm gonna get in the main topic, which is why did we end up choosing YAML over some key features of Terraform like uh, .tfrs or even JSON. So our in-house solutions currently uses AWS CLI and Photo3 to manage their infrastructures, which is great. However, it missed some key features that Terraform provided so this prompted us to migrate to using Terraform to manage our infrastructure. One of the major acceptance criteria while migrating to Terraform was to be able to maintain our in-house solutions, which already had YAML complex. The main goal at the end of the day was that we wanted our users to be able to create or delete resources without prior knowledge of Terraform and we wanted to maintain a single source of truth. So a lot of you might have a question uh, towards the end, which is why not use Terraform CDK when we had started our Terraform migration? CDK had just been announced when we started our Terraform migration. We decided that it was still too young of a platform to just make this. So let's, uh, Talk about how would current how would I currently create multiple SPS queues as an example with a debt layer queue, multiple environments, and a bunch of other features. So I'll jump into what it could look like. So ideally, uh, if everyone's familiar with Terraform, uh, you would uh, create perhaps your Simple, this is how you would create your simple queues. Uh, you would have a bunch of resource blocks, defining your queue, what kind of queue it is, and passing in variables. However, this becomes unmanageable uh, with scale as you would have to repeat this multiple times for as many, uh, as many queues as you have. Uh, so, uh, one of the main features of Terraform is you can use modules. So over here, I've created a module, and but again, in the module, we can create uh, a bunch of them, but we still have to pass those variables. However, now we can use complex data structures, uh, like uh, creating a map of all our names, the, the type it is, access policies, or visibly time on seconds. This works fine when we have maybe less than 10 or 15 queues, or we're just managing one uh, specific resource. As you can see, when we start writing more, at, as you can see, this is fine for only one service for host. Uh, in our case at Welcome, we had more than 10 plus services, which included things like SPS, RAP3, SNS, SES, etc. And each of these service, AWS services itself had 20 plus resources each. When we tried to manage this uh, initially during our Terraform migration, we realized that our TFR files would become very massive and very hard to manage. So we decided to use YAML files. So over here, I've done the exact same thing what we were doing in TFRs, which is just create a YAML file for queues. Over here, all it does is take the name, the type, access policy, what environment it belongs to. Uh, some other additional features is over here, for example, here's saying that I want a dead letter queue and that I want the dead letter queue 
to be the same as this. So in that case, uh, before I jump to models, in general, we would just create it, uh, create the queues like this. However, so for the modules, we would just pass the config file. Uh, and in that case, our config file is the sqs.yam. In our modules, we have two main things, a locals.tf and a main.tf. Just an FYI, the locals.tf and main.tf were separated out uh, just for demo purposes. This can all be you know, under the main.tf. So uh, what does the locals.tf do? Locals.tf is very simple. Uh, all it does is um, first parse the information uh, by using Terraform's function, YAML decode. YAML decode uh, reads the YAML file and puts it in something that Terraform can understand. Next, we are using other uh, Terraform functions like flatten and for loops and look up and if and continue functions. Over here, what we are doing is we are iterating through all the queues that we have created so that YAML has parsed and assigning them to a flattened data structure that we can uh, easy, uh, much more easily read for our resources. So for example, uh, over here, once we have iterated through each queue, you're taking the type to access policy. And the lookup function of Terraform allows us to one, uh, see if a specific key exists or not and decide what the default value of that a key should be. So for example, if the, uh, the dead letter Q key did not exist, we don't want to create a dead letter Q at all. Whereas visibility timeout seconds does not exist, we just want it to default to 30 seconds. The if contains function over here is just so that we can figure out which workspace we want to create it. So we are not creating unnecessary resources um, in different environments. So uh, now let's look at the main resources and how we create those. So the main function that we use in all of these resources is now uh, the for each function. Similar to the for loop, we first iterate through the queues that we have, that the new data structure that we have defined and we are also checking whether a dead letter queue exists or not. This allows us to create a resource accordingly. So for example, over here, uh, a dead letter queue does not exist. So we are creating a standard queue with a standard policy. However, if a dead letter queue did exist, then we would, create, we would add in the redrive policy, which would have the dead letter uh, queues uh, target ARN. This is what the TFRs file would eventually look like. So, so that's how we implement our our uh, implement uh, our YAML uh, and Terraform first by setting up the YAML file, then by reading the YAML files in our locals, and then by creating the resources by using for each other. So in conclusion, uh, what we were able to do is abstract away from the complexity of large TF bars files. And using YAML also allowed us to empower our users to create new resources more easily. And our users didn't need to know much about Terraform and had to use familiar tools to create infrastructure. If you want to see more details about the implementation, uh, I have written an article about this. Uh, it's on, on my medium.com. So feel free to uh, check that out. Uh, I will now open the floor for questions. Feel free to post them in chat, uh, as well as I will open the floor uh, by enabling audio so you can unmute yourself and ask questions. Um, seems like we already have a Questions. Um, uh, Sam John asked, have you had problems with the YAML schema not conforming to what the TF module uses? Um, 
No, we ha haven't uh, yet. Uh, since we are the ones who are writing our own modules, we've been able to uh, figure uh, the schema has been it was well written that we've been able to parse it. Um, most of the YAMLs, we don't try to have a very nested YAML uh, structure. That answers your question. Are there any more questions that people have? All right. Um, I guess there's no more no questions. Uh, there isn't any. Uh, we can end this. Um, I'll stop sharing the screen. Thanks for everyone for joining in. And I'll be posting this on YouTube.